All right. So today we are talking about the importance of fats. All right. The importance of fats. So what is the purpose of fats? They make things taste amazing. They do. They really do make things taste amazing. If you've never had beef brisket, oof, you are missing out. And you got to go to Texas for some great beef brisket. I will tell you that right now. Yeah. And a lot of it's just in Houston. I'm like, something. Or no. Uh, yeah. I forget. Yeah. <laughs> just outside of Houston. Anyways, besides making... Appleton. Oh, there you go. Besides making food taste good, they are essential for vitamin absorption. So you've probably heard of your... DECA vitamins or your vitamins A, D, E, and K, as well as beta carotene, which uh, you find in like the red, orange, yellow types of different um, fruits and veggies. They're also essential for hormone production. They protect and insulate your organs. Maybe some of us have a little more insulation than others. Um, they are an energy source, and obviously they're also a reserve source when needed. They help slow digestion, and they are integral in the cell membrane structure. Plus, they uh, help with brain function. As we mentioned, they taste good. They are definitely the most calorically dense macronutrient that you will encounter, and they hold nine calories per gram. So the question is, is are they the enemy? No, definitely not. They, they, they are. I mean, think about all the important things that we just mentioned that they do. But there are definitely different types of fats that can affect how you look and feel on a regular basis. And so let's dive a little deeper into the different types of fats that we're talking about. So there's three different types of fats. We have our unsaturated fats, we have our saturated fats, and then we have our trans fats. So first off is the unsaturated fats. So typically you'll find these liquid at room temperature, we have two different types that we'll go into. The polyunsaturated, those are actually essential fats, and those are your omega-3s and your omega-6s. Then you have your monounsaturated fats, which are your oleic acid, which is the most abundant of the monosaturated. And you may have seen like um, palmitic, I can, this one always stumps me, elatic and vicinic acids as well. So first off is our polyunsaturated fats. So when we mentioned before that these are essential fatty acids, so what does that mean? That means that you actually have to consume them. So you need to eat them in order for your body to obtain them. Because they don't, it doesn't produce them. So you have to ingest. Yes. And so those are your omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids. The thing about polyunsaturated fats is they are the most chemically unstable and they are very easily vulnerable to oxidation and so oxidation is which uh, what causes uh, inflammation within our body and you may have heard of the term like free radicals and free radicals those are like the negative things that cause inflammation within our body um, and so because these are easily vulnerable to oxidation <laughs> it can cause a lot of inflammation so what we're saying here is it's important to be selective on the polyunsaturated fats that you are consuming. Where you will find these are they're typically in grain and seed oils and fatty fish. So things like salmon, mackerel, tuna, trout, herring. You'll also find them in walnuts, flax seeds, sunflower seeds, tofu, vegetable oils. So things like canola oil, corn oil, and soybean oil. So omega-6, which is a polyunsaturated fat, are your LA or linoleic acid and your AA fatty acids. These are typically considered pro-inflammatory, which means they promote inflammation. And while inflammation is a, an important process in our bodies to help with uh, adaptation, when we live in chronic inflammation, that's not a good thing. <laughs> and that's where a lot of the diseases come from. And so the American diet is very, very high in omega-6 fats. Uh, the About like 100 years ago, there's been studies that have shown that in the past, we had a 4 to 1 omega-6 to omega-3 ratio, whereas nowadays we have a 25 to 1 ratio. So that's like 
yeah. massive increase in the amount that we are consuming. Um, it has also been shown that when you have a more, we'll say, evenly balanced ratio, that there is a decrease in diseases and mortality. We'll dive into this a little bit more in just a moment. Uh, where you will find omega-6 fats are going to be in your grain and seed oils. So canola oil, corn oil, soybean oil, safflower, grape seed, sunflower. And these oils have been heavily processed, which create free radicals in your body that we were kind of talking about in just or a moment ago. And they lead to the chronic inflammation. And a lot of restaurants nowadays utilize these oils because they're cheaper, um, they cook with them at high heat, and so you're exposed to these a lot more, which leads to that higher ratio. Omega-3 fats. So omega-3 fats are your EPAs, DHAs, ALA fatty acids. They are considered the anti-inflammatory and are also considered our good fats, or that's how we typically know them. They've been associated with improved cognitive function or aka brain function. They help with cardiovascular health, joint health, um, long-term body composition, muscle growth, like so many different things. They are found in, we got fatty fish, so wild salmon, mackerel, sardines, krill. They do occur in some algae as well. Um, there are small quantities in grass-fed beef and pasture-raised eggs, as well as flax seeds. So that's your uh, more like plant-based omega-3 fatty acid. And then EVOO, which is your extra virgin olive oil. Sometimes we forget about those. All right, let's dive into monounsaturated fats. So monounsaturated fats, um, the oleic acid, which is the one that is the most abundant, these are also typically found at room temperature and they solidify when you put them in the refrigerator. They are chemically stable in comparison to our polyunsaturated fats. And these have been considered um, one of our uh, people that we learn a lot from as well. His name's Max Lugavir. Uh, he considers it the brain's best friend. And so meaning basically it's important for uh, your brain function. It helps with the, the speed of your brain, the speed of your thoughts, um, your heart health, and it also helps with inflammation as well. Monosaturated fats, uh, monounsaturated fats are also a good source of vitamin E and increased con consumption of these has also been associated with a lot of positive health outcomes. You'll find these in um, nuts and seeds, avocados, olives, the uh, almonds, hazelnuts, cashews, pecans, Brazil nuts, macadamia nuts. We got all types, plant oils, extra virgin olive oil, or that EVOO, avocado oil is another one. It, they also make up 50% of the fat content in wild salmon and grass-fed beef as well. So when it comes to extra virgin olive oil, it was a, a fun thing that we learned. There's a compound in it. It, it, it contains oleocanthal. And this particular compound has been shown to be as anti-inflammatory as a low-dose ibuprofen, which is pretty crazy. You may have also heard ibuprofen um, is Motrin. And so when you're in pain or if you um, have some type of inflammation, the doctor will prescribe you like ibuprofen or Motrin. So it's pretty crazy that extra virgin olive oil can be shown to be as anti-inflammatory as something that the doctor prescribes you. And it's all natural. <laughs> It, uh, this particular compound also helps with the prevention of Alzheimer's disease. And it is one thing to note that it's not found in regular olive oils. So when it comes to picking a good olive oil or extra virgin olive oil, it, one of the things that's really interesting to note is they have this rating system and it's rated by the like spiciness or bitterness or itchiness. These are different terms that can be thrown around interchangeably that you feel on the back of your throat. And so it makes you cough. So <laughs> this particular cough is caused from a higher amount of that oleocanthal. Okay. Um, so 
in Italy, it's like, oh, they have a one cough serum, a two cough, well, not serum, but oil and a three cough oil, which is kind of crazy. And so oftentimes we associate like bitterness with not so good, but in actuality, a higher quality olive oil, um, if you want the, the most benefit of it, actually makes you cough and feel spicy. Um, can you still reap the um, benefits of this if it's not as coffee or spicy? Yes, of course you can. Um, but that is like one way of picking a, we'll say high quality olive oil. There's a couple other uh, factors that come into play, such as um, finding ones that are in uh, dark bottles uh, or opaque bottles or tins because light uh, degrades olive oil. Uh, and then also looking at like where the source is coming from. So single um, origins is always a good one to find as well as single uh, sources of olives is a good rating to find as well. If you check out the fat section in the Nutrition 101, there's also a couple other factors that you can look at when it comes to picking a higher quality olive oil in your shopping ventures. So one question is, will adding more good fats into your intake make you healthy. I mean, a lot of people are like, oh, like you just need to add more fats into your diet. It's, it's good for you. It's good fat, right? Right? Yeah. Well, it depends. So it, it really depends. Just like carbs, the majority of the population, they tend to overconsume fats in comparison to what their body actually requires on a regular basis. Because it's really easy to do. Right? It is. I mean, like, because fats hold nine calories per gram, this much of a fat could be like equivalent to this much of a carb when it comes to calories. Well, and, and it's not even just the calories necessarily. It's the size of it. Like, yeah, know, like, a, like a tablespoon or like a thumb amount of peanut butter or oil goes a long way where it's like, you could have so many vegetables and that's what it's like, oh, like it doesn't seem like that much, but it is very heavy. Yeah. I do the, do the peanut butter test. Oh, no. oh it is. It is a very eye-opening test. If you like peanut butter, it could be soul crushing. Oof, like it's, it's soul crushing, but it is eye-opening and it's a good test to do. Basically take a jar of peanut butter, put it on a scale, scoop out a serving of peanut butter, which is 32 grams and see what that looks like. Just see, going to put you to the test. <laughs> but in general, adding fats just to add fats is only going to bump up the calories. Now, if you need more calories in your intake, perfect. that's phenomenal. It's a great, great way to do it, right? It's to add more fats, especially depending on how much you like to eat in the sitting. Yeah. Especially if you're like, oh, this seems like a lot of food. Sometimes when people are, uh, you know, you know, starting this journey or, or making progress, it's like, oh, this seems like a lot of food. And so that's where food choice or fat choice uh, plays a huge factor because it allows you to be able to one, get more flavor, get all the health benefits, but then also give your body what it needs without feeling over full or like it's a chore. Yes. Um, but if you don't need more calories, then adding more fat just to add more fat might be like putting gas on a fire, essentially. So it, it's not going to help you out, really. <laughs> so instead of adding more fats, if you don't need the calories, it would be more focusing on changing the types of fats that you are consuming on a regular basis. So before we dive into this, let's talk about saturated fats. So these are the so-called bad fats, yet they are essential to life. Like they really are essential to life. They provide support to your cell membrane and they're precursors to a lot of hormones as well. You will typically find saturated fats solid at room temperature, and they are the most chemically stable when it comes um, to their structure, which me makes them great for cooking. So they're not going to um, oxidize as easily as these poly and monounsaturated fats if you utilize them for cooking. You'll find saturated fats in animal products like beef, pork, the dark part um, of like chicken and turkey, lard. Typically, uh, organic will have less saturated fat than non-organic. You'll also find these in high fat uh, dairy, such as butter, ghee, uh, cream, cheese. You got coconut, like coconut oil, um, olives, extra virgin olive oil actually contains 15% uh, saturated fats. And most of the time I would say saturated fats are usually associated with processed or junk foods, that's such as, bad rap. Okay. yeah, that's is why they get the bad rap. Um, this is from the fried foods, desserts, pizzas, hamburgers, pastries, cookies, the, the, the stuff that you see on Fit Foodies on wheels, right? That, that's the stuff everyone, most people want to eat. Yes. Yeah, yeah. That, that consume a lot, large part of uh, their intake. 
And so this begs the question, are saturated fats bad for you? No, you need them. No, they're essential. We, we, we actually, we need saturated fats, but they have this horrible bad rap. But they can actually magnify damaging effects when you consume a high carb, low nutrient dense diet in large amounts. And so it's one of those things where, um, like a lot of things that we talk about, uh, there's no, there is no like, you know, one, one solution. It's, it's doing all of these things together, focusing one at a time, but it's not like, oh, if I just do this single thing, everything's going to change. It's about how everything works together. Yeah. And so like, if you are a person who consumes a lot of junk food or processed foods, and that makes up the majority of your intake, then having a, like you're already a having an increase in saturated fats, but then adding more saturated fats on top of that isn't probably going to make you feel the best. Yeah. Last one of the bunch, trans fats. So if you didn't know, there is actually one naturally occurring trans fat. It's called CLA. Um, it is found in grass-fed milk and meat products. It has been associated with reduced cancer, better metabolic health, and vascular health, but it's very rare in our diets. Some people, you you may have heard the supplement called CLA, which it's we'll say it's been um, mixed reviews or mixed um, studies on the effectiveness of CLA within your intake. Uh, but typically, most people, when they hear CLA, it's like, oh, CLA is a supplement, um, fat burning, that's a good thing. Uh, but this is very different than the naturally occurring trans fat that happens. Most trans fats that we are familiar with are man-made, and so they are formed by turning liquid oils, so they take the polyunsaturated oil um, into a solid fat, and they do this through a process called hydrogenation, and so you may have heard hydrogenated and partially hydrogenated oils. So basically, they act like an unsaturated fat, and they behave like a saturated fat. And this is the one that um, you really want to watch out for. And so you'll find these in margarine, shortenings, packaged foods like Oreos, chips, uh, frosting. Oh, I used to love scooping that frosting out of the container. Um, bakery products, non-dairy creamers, nut butters that uh, don't separate. separate. So like nut butters that you don't like have Jiffy. to stir. Yeah, Jiffy, the Peter Pan, all the oh. ones that we grew up on as a kid, right? Uh, even like vegan cheese spreads. So with trans fats, there's been a lot of studies that show that they are highly inflammatory and they contribute to chronic inflammation. They also promote insulin resistance and heart disease. They've been shown to raise total cholesterol and suppress the protective um, good cholesterol, your HDL. And also other studies have shown that increased consumption of these trans fats, the man-made ones, um, have been shown to shrink your brain and cause Alzheimer's disease as well. So now that we know a little bit about fats, how the heck, how, like, how much should we actually be consuming? It, it depends. Our our favorite answer. It depends. Not it's, like the brief. It's a single answer for everything. It really is because it really depends. We're all unique. We're we're all different, right? And you only need so much fat, like you really do. And so what it comes down to is it's going to be unique to each person. Um, some of the things that are going to come into play is like what phase are you in? Are you in a fat loss phase? When you're in a fat loss phase, you might be consuming less fats because fats take up a lot of calories. And if you're hungry, you may want foods that fill your stomach more. So your fats might be a little bit lower in this phase. So it's easier to keep calories low yep. if you're not necessarily eating um, small size, heavy caloric things. Yes. Um, are you in a maintenance phase? Are you just like cruising? Um, are you eating more calories? So you're in a surplus what are your dietary preferences? Do you prefer higher carbs? Do you prefer higher fat? Do you like a little bit of a balance? What are your goals? Are you looking um, to go run a marathon? Um, do you Are you a foodie like us and you have a certain lifestyle that you'd like to lead? But in general, when it comes to, we'll say, trans fats and saturated fats, trans fats first, the recommendation is no more than 1% of your daily calories. So basically, mainly focusing on, we'll say, the good fats. And then, yes, do we eat Oreos? 
Yes, we do. Do we eat fried food? Yes, we do. But we also eat a diet um, that is encompassed with whole single ingredient foods and as some, well. Sometimes the easy way to balance that is realizing that things aren't as black and white. And so um, for us, like full transparency, there's there's days where it's uh, considerably higher than 1%, but there's a day where it's nothing, right? So it's like, if you if you look at it as a continuum, it's like, sure, one, one day out of the week, if it's 20%, but every other day it's at zero, then it's like, oh, that works out. And so it's figuring out what that balance looks like for you in regards to if and when you do want to eat it, if it is um, frequently at very you know small amounts, or if it's something that you want to enjoy every once in a while on a little bit of a higher amount, right? The difference between one Oreo a day and having five once a week, yeah. right? And when it comes to saturated fats, well, it depends on like what your regular consumption is. So like if you're getting a majority of your saturated fats um, from single ingredient like coconut oil and whole food sources, no big deal. But if you are eating a very like high refined sugar diet, so a lot of processed and junk foods, um, adding more saturated fats, then it might not be as good for you. And so those typical recommendations when it comes to like the American Heart Association is like around 6% on the daily calories. Uh, but this, like, like we said, it really, de it depends on the consumption, how active you are. Uh, do you have any current dispositions such as diabetes, high cholesterol, those types of things. But in general, the first thing when it comes to your intake is ensuring that you're meeting your required protein intake. Like that is crucial. You, you have to consume protein in order to get protein. Um, and you want to maintain as much muscle as possible, especially the older that you get, because it's that much harder. And so making sure that you're consuming at least 0.8 to 1.2 grams per pound of protein. Once you've done that, when it comes to the remainder of your calories, adequate fat intake is around 20 to 30% of your intake, or at least 30 to 35 grams per day. But ultimately, it would be coming down to you deciding your personal preference on the distribution of carbs versus fats for yourself. So what fat sources to focus on? So th these are some high quality fat sources, um, extra virgin olive oil, avocado oil, salmon, um, avocados, almonds, nut and butters, minus the ones that have the additives. Saturated fats, you have your grass-fed beef, you have your geese, your butter, your coconut oil, um, even eggs. Eggs has a mixture of all of the different types of fats. But ultimately, in conclusion, fats are essential to your diet. They're actually even in vegetables, if you did not know. <laughs> uh, and they're not the enemy. And the biggest difference is making sure that you're focusing on high quality fats, such as the ones that we had listed. Um, and then you can access this and check out the fat section to get a deeper dive into what those are and figure out what's sustainable for you and what you actually enjoy on a regular basis. Yeah. And so a lot of times with, with things like this, it's it's easier to demonize something than it is to truly understand it. So we know it's a lot of information, um, but, you know, revisiting this, asking questions, all of those things, that way it's something that you can, you know, learn more and more. And then the, the ultimate thing is um, having, you know, food selection that, that you enjoy, but mm -hmm. then also keeps your, uh, your, your protein and your calories where it needs to be. So that way, like, uh, health is on the forefront. And so like, I wouldn't necessarily in the beginning, get super hung up on what types of fat or where they're located or this at whatever, it's yeah. just like, in general, uh, make sure that your your fat consumption isn't through the roof, because it'll help keep calories in check. Um, and then sometimes if you are lower fat, it helps with food selection, right? Like, if you're if you're not eating crazy high fat foods, it's going to be really easier to hit your protein, uh, and to stay under calories and show it's just a matter of like using it as a tool, and not being scared of it, but then also realizing that like, um, just because it's it's hard to understand doesn't make it evil. It's just easy to misuse when you don't know what's going on. But for that's sure. what we're here for. But and like he said, like finding some, the ones that you enjoy. Because I'll tell you right now, like I don't like sardines. So you you bet your ass off. I don't care how good sardines are for you. I'm not going to be consuming sardines. Um, but there's like other ways that you can focus on getting those good fats in. So taking a look at what it is that you enjoy. And, you know, if you are a person, let's say maybe you do eat 50 million Oreos every single day and you want to start focusing on like higher quality fats, then reducing the amount of Oreos on a regular basis 
is a start. Yeah, small, like, small, realistically, like that's a massive start. Yeah, small, small shifts, small substitutions makes all the difference in the world. And it's it's those incremental changes that make for um, huge movement on the back end. So rather than trying to, um, you know, do something cold turkey or, you know, have massive change overnight, it's just, all right, cool. Like, how can I scale back? How can I make small shifts? So that way it's something that's enjoyable and sustainable long-term.